Pushing the limits of technology is part of what bicycles are all about. Small, or sometimes not so small, tweaks to a bike design to gain a few watts or shed a few grams, or just shed a few grams of drag, is what pushes the bike industry to keep innovating. And triathlon has always been at the forefront of out-of-the-box thinking, throwing up some crazy designs. Today, we're going to take a look at some of the crazy triathlon bikes that have emerged from triathlon. Triathlon, and particularly the Ironman in Hawaii, has always been at the forefront of these bike innovations. In 1987, the introduction of aero bars, invented by ski coach Boone Lennon, saw huge chunks of time knocked off the Ironman bike splits. The innovation race had begun, and these innovations were quickly seized upon by professional cyclists. In 1989, Greg LeMond used aero bars to win the Tour de France, and new radical bike designs like the Lotus 108, ridden by Chris Boardman, were used to shatter records in events like the 4km pursuit and the hour record. But just as quickly as those records were broken, the UCR stepped in with its aversion to anything new and those bikes were outlawed. Triathlon and the powers that govern it, probably because there isn't a unifying power that governs it, has been far more relaxed about accepting new and even outlandish bike designs. In fact, if the bike passes the rudimentary safety standards of pretty much any bike, it's allowed on a race course. For a long time, the bike industry didn't see triathlon as much of a market. And so triathlon bikes were really just road bikes with the, a few additions like clip-on aero bars, with the exception of a few of the bikes we're gonna look at today. But today, triathlon is big business and big bike brands are pouring a lot of money in R&D into creating bikes that completely ignore the UCR's overbearing rules and then marketing them just to triathletes. Cycling's loss is triathlon's gain and we're seeing the boat being pushed out in these innovations in the newest and greatest triathlon bikes. So today we've compiled a list of the most innovative, inspiring, absurd triathlon bikes that we've seen on triathlon courses around the world. Triathlon actually started breaking away from cycling world long before it was forced to by the UCR. In 1987, Dan Emfield at Co. at Quintana Roo, which was actually a wetsuit company, designed a bike with a smaller front wheel and steeper seat tube angle, particularly so that triathletes, women in particular, could use those new aero bars, at the time the only ones being the Scott DH bar. This bike was revolutionary for one reason, because it was fast. So fast, in fact, that Ray Browning in the 1987 Ironman New Zealand got off the bike a full 17 minutes ahead of his nearest competitor. Today, the bike doesn't look that revolutionary or extreme, but it set the importance of technological innovation if you're going to win a triathlon. In 1989, in a radical move even by today's standards, Sofrad removed the seat tube from their bike and the beam bike was born. Sofrad was hoping for significant aero advantages and a more comfortable and forgiving ride. Unfortunately, it worked too well and the ride was so squashy and unpredictable that it was almost unrideable, especially on the hills. It took a partnership with Zip to create an actually rideable bike and the Zip 2001 was the result of their collaboration. Greg Welch rode the Zip 2001 at 1991 in Ironman Hawaii. I guess in 1991 the name 2001 sounded pretty futuristic. They later introduced the Zip 3001 which was simply the same bike with strips of boron added to the carbon to make it stiffer and lighter. They only made a limited run of 100 bucks of the Zip 3001 in 1997 and production also ended in 1997. They never made any more. It would be unfair to give Zip all the credit for the beam bike, especially seeing as Softride invented it first. And Softride did persist with their bike. In fact, Greg Welch rode it to success at Ironman Hawaii in 1994. By 1996, 126 of the 857 bikes on the Kona Pier. That's nearly one in six 
bikes at the biggest triathlon showcase in the world were soft rides. You won't see many of them around at your triathlons today, although one was counted on the Kona Pier in 2019 at the bike count. But the legacy of the soft ride lives on today in some of the bikes you're going to see further down the list. In 1998, Trek released the Trek Y-Foil, which was a sign that the bike industries were maybe going to take new radical design seriously. Everyone was excited. Unfortunately, soon after its release, the UCI stepped in and banned NDD or non-double diamond bike frame designs. The Trek Y-Foil had a very short life and 1999 Trek ceased production entirely. It's a bit of a mystery why no male pros were riding the Cat Cheetah at the end of the last millennium, especially because it won every women's high man Hawaii race from 1998 to 2005, twice under Laurie Bowden and six times under Natasha Badman. Borrowing a lot from the original Lotus Type 108 and hotter designs, a bike banned and then unbanned and then rebanned by the UCR, the Cat Cheetah was a carbon monocoque frame made to measure in Switzerland. It was as niche as they come. I say it was niche because it was 10,000 Swiss francs as a starting point with up to 5,000 Swiss francs of optional extras. And that was 20 years ago. So not really aimed at the mass market. In fact, the cheetah was more like a leopard. You'd hardly ever see one in the wild. But it was fast and it took advantage of triathlon's lenient, lenient bike rules like no other bike at the time. The introduction of more stringent rules by the UCR in 1999 on bike designs meant that innovation was very limited for the first decade of this century. In fact, there was hardly a bike released that didn't adhere to the UCR's strict rules of a double diamond frame and no tubes that were more than three times wider than they were deep. As you can see from this bike buyer's guide from Triathlete magazine in 2010, all of the bikes of that decade adhered to the UCR's strict rules. Innovations were limited to carbon layups and cable routine and not much else. But eventually, Triathlon started to look enticing to bike manufacturers and by the second decade of the century, triathlon only bikes started to emerge which ignored the UCR's rules. One of the first was our number five. As you can probably see immediately, it was not a new bike at all. It was a Zip 2001, but built with the new carbon technology that had come a long way since the early 90s. It was a reinv reinvention, a relaunch of the Zip 2001. As bike brand owner TJ Tollickson will freely admit, his affinity for the Zip 2001 was stoked in 2011 when he won his first Ironman on a 15 year old Zip 2001. When no one, including Zip themselves, would remanufacture the Zip 2001 with the new carbon, he took it upon himself to do it himself and Diamond Box was launched a brand that is still going strong today. Launched in 2015, Ventum pushed the boat out even further with bike designs. Borrowing heavily from the original Lotus and Hotter designs with a carbon monocoque frame, Ventum did away with both the seat stays and the down tube, creating a radical Z-shaped fr frame design. Its looks were, and still are, polarizing and not for everyone, but its performance in the wind tunnel got everyone's attention. Suddenly, big bike brands were scrambling the R&D departments to come up with a real production ready super bike. They were tearing up the UCR rulebook and attempting to design something that was fast in the wind tunnel, easy and to use and travel with, versatile on all those flat to hilly triathlon courses and catered to all the needs of a triathlete like nutrition and spares. As any engineer will tell you, take away the limiting parameters and designing doesn't get easier, it gets harder. 
The triathlon world waited with anticipation on which direction these engineers would go, and they went back to the beam bark. And now, number three. In October 2016, the triathlon world was abuzz with news of a new bike from triathlon's biggest bike brand, Cervelo. Cervelo had been the major player in triathlon bikes, winning the Kona bike count almost every year. But all of their bikes, with the exception of a few cockpits and fairings, had been UCR legal until now. The Cervelo P5X. This launch was exciting particularly for me, as I was one of the first in the world to ride it just a few days after its launch at the Ironman World Champs in October 2016. It was a beam bike, but unlike any beam bike that had been before, with all kinds of innovative new design features, such as a split base bar for easy traveling and, controversial at the time, disc brakes. It also featured everything you could need for a 112 mile bike ride, including a built-in bento box, built-in storage space for spares, and places for bottle cages that were out of the wind. The X in the name, P5X, stood for XUCR, and finally, the big bike brands had split their ranges into bikes for cyclists and bikes for triathletes. Now we come to the truly bizarre and head-turning designs. With free rein and carbon technology that could make pretty much anything you could imagine, the bikes that came out of bike boxes were very much out of the box. The Diamondback Andean 3 spared no carbon fiber and completely put to bed the UCR's 3 to 1 tube depth rule. Its sail like frame design was really futuristic and if you put a disc wheel on it and a stiff breeze you'll probably need the skills of a sailor to get it around the bike course. Without so much as a nod in the direction of the UCR rules, SIPO a Japanese manufacturing company catering exclusively to triathletes created this triathlon wind cheating machine. They've pushed carbon technology to its limits by not only doing away with the seat tube and seat stays, but also mounting the front forks horizontally. It takes some time and head tilting to figure out how it all works, but apparently it does. We're not sure if this will ever become mainstream, but one thing is for sure. Designs like this lead to new innovations. We love the crazy innovations and ideas and look forward to more crazy bikes entering the triathlon world in the near future. Even if riding them in public does nothing for the perception that triathletes are weirdos. Thanks for watching our top 10 crazy triathlon bikes. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and follow us on social media and hit that subscribe button for more great triathlon content.